Okay, how you doing everyone? Welcome to Anatomy 6. Today we are going to talk about uh, antagonistic pairs of muscles and then we're going to take a look at the muscles of the upper back, the lats and the triceps. So as always, this is following on, on the uh, building upon the information that we've covered in Anatomy 1 through 5. So please make sure that you're familiar with all of that content before you dive into this content here today. So to get started, we said we're going to talk about antagonistic pairs. Uh, when we talk about muscles and movement, uh, we should remember that muscles can only pull. Okay, They cannot push. Therefore, when they have muscles working around a joint, they are working in pairs. So when a muscle contracts, it creates movement at a joint. For that joint to go back to its original position, another muscle contracts and pulls the muscle back to its original position. So uh, for elbow flexion, we have the bicep will flex and flex the elbow. And then when we want to extend the elbow, it's the tricep that, ex that flexes to extend the elbow. So in that example there, we've got one muscle pulling to create movement. Then we have another muscle pulling to create the opposite movement and return the body part to its original position. So the pair of muscles in that case, the biceps and the triceps working to flex and extend the elbow are known as an antagonistic pair. Uh, there's many common examples of antagonistic pairs around the body. So ones that you'll frequently come across the biceps and triceps, which you just named, the hamstrings and the quadriceps in your leg, your glutes and your hip flexors, your gastrocnemius and your tibialis anterior there in your lower leg, or your pecs and your lats. Uh, the pecs, which we talked about last week, the lats we're going to talk about today. So in the image that you see on screen there, uh, we've just got an example of it in action. So we've got uh, a player going to kick the ball. And if we focus on the hip joint, for example, in that image, we see that the glutes uh, are going to be working to extend the hip joint. And then the hip flexors are going to be working to uh, flex the hip joint uh, as he strikes the ball. Or we could look at the knee joint. We've got the hamstrings flexing the knee in the first image. And then we've got the quadriceps extending the knee in the second image. So these pairs of muscles working to create movements are known as antagonistic pairs. In the antagonistic pair, we have one muscle that's called the agonist and one and the other muscle called the antagonist. So as we mentioned, one muscle contracts in order to uh, create movement. And as that happens, the other muscle, muscle relaxes and lengthens. So in our example of uh, elbow flexion here, as I flex my bicep, my tricep muscle here is relaxing and lengthening. Now, as I contract my tricep, my bicep is relaxing and lengthening. So the muscle that's contracting to create the movement of the joint is called the agonist. And the opposing muscle, the one that's relaxing and lengthening, is called the antagonist. An easy way of remembering it is that if you did the whatever movement you're, you're thinking about, if you did it repeatedly, the agonist is the muscle that is going to be in agony. It's going to tire and, and, and get sore. Uh, that's the one that's creating the movement. Uh, it is the agonist. And the antagonist is the opposing muscle that, uh, that relaxes. So we've got elbow flexion here illustrated in the diagram. The biceps in this case is the agonist. It's contracting to flex the elbow. And as it, um, uh, as it uh, flexes, uh, or sorry, as it contracts and flexes the elbow, the tricep relaxes. Then in elbow extension, when we're straightening it back out, we've reversed those roles. The triceps is now the agonist. It is contracting and shortening. And as it does that, it pulls on the bones of the forearm to extend the, the elbow. What I didn't mention here, as the bicep contracts and shortens, it also pulls on the bones of the forearm to flex it. So we've just got muscles contracting, creating a pull on a bone at a joint to create movement. Uh, while we're talking about these antagonistic pairs, we'll also talk about different types of muscle contraction. So there's three basic types of contraction, uh, concentric, eccentric, and isometric. And just looking at those at a very basic level today, a concentric contraction is a type of muscle activation that causes your muscle to shorten. 
okay as your muscle shortens it generates a much enough force to create movements so again in the example of the bicep curl here as the bicep contracts we say this is a concentric contraction the bicep is shortening it's pulling on the bones of the forearm and it is creating this flexion at the elbow so a concentric contraction is when the muscle shortens under load and it usually creates enough force in order for us to move something or for us to lift a weight so a concentric contraction is when the muscle shortens under load Opposite to that, we have an eccentric contraction. That's when a muscle lengthens under load or when a muscle actively lengthens under, under load. So imagine you've done your bicep curl, you've lifted up a weight, and now you want to slowly lower that weight back down to the ground in order to resist the, 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 the weight and slowly extend the elbow. We're performing a concentric contract, sorry, an eccentric contraction of the bicep. An eccentric contraction is when the, the, the muscle lengthens under load. Finally, we've got an isometric contraction here. An isometric contraction is where a muscle is active, it's contracting, but it is held at a constant length isometric iso meaning equal metric referring to length so there's no change in length but the muscle is generating force so imagine if you had a a locked door and you try to pull the door open uh, you would be able to generate force uh, against the handle of the door but you're not going to be able to overcome that force so that the muscles involved in creating that pulling motion on the door are, inv are, are involved in an isometric contraction they are actively working but there's no change in muscle length that the muscle is neither lengthening nor shortening so we've got antagonistic pairs are a pairs of muscles that work around a joint to create movements um, within the antagonistic pair we've got an agonist is the muscle that causes the movement when the agonist is causing movement the opposing muscle is known as the antagonist then when we want to return the joint to its original position those roles are reversed the muscle that was the antagonist becomes the agonist and vice versa there's also three different types of muscle contraction. At a very basic level, we have got a concentric contraction when a muscle shortens under load. We've got an eccentric contraction when a muscle lengthens under load. And we've got an isometric contraction when a muscle is active, but there is no change in length. It is not getting longer or getting shorter. Isometric. Okay. Moving on, last week uh, we looked at some of the muscles of the shoulder and the upper arm and we focused on the ones that are on the anterior surface of the body. We looked at the deltoids, the pectoralis major and minor, the serratus anterior, the biceps and the brachialis. Today we're going to uh, stay looking at the upper part of the body on the shoulder girdle. We're going to focus on the muscles that are on the posterior surface mostly. So we're going to look at the trapezius, the lats, the rhomboids, the teres major. We're also going to look at the rotator cuff, which is a group of four muscles. And then just to complete this section, we're going to look at the triceps, which is a muscle on the back of the upper arm. So switching over to our trusty model here, what we want to do today in, the, in, in now is focus in on the muscles of the shoulder girdle in the upper arm. So remember, we start to use this tool to layer up muscles on the body, starting with the ones that are deep closest to the core of the body and laying in muscles that are more and more superficial towards the surface of the body until we have all of the muscles uh, laid, uh, laid out on our model here. So uh, we are looking at the anterior uh, surface of the body here towards the front. I said today we want to focus on the muscles that are around on the posterior surface. So if I spin our model around here, we get a nice view of the muscles uh, in the upper back that are going to have a, a, an act, impact on movement at the shoulder girdle. So the first one we want to look at is the trapezius. The trapezius is this big diamond shape pair of muscles uh, on the superficial surface of your upper back. So it's towards the surface, it's on the upper back and we've got this diamond shape. Now there's on each side, there's a couple of different portions. So as I select them here, it will select the individual 
segments of the trapezius. So here we've got highlighted the trapezius uh, on the left hand side of the body and I'll just highlight the ones on the right hand side. There we go. So when we're talking about the trapezius muscle, we're talking about this big uh, diamond shape uh, set of muscles on the left and the right hand side of the body. And each, each, um, uh, each side is separated into an upper, a middle and a lower portion. And if you look, if we zoom in, we can see that in those different portions, we've got muscle fibers that are lined up. So you can see the way the fibers are lined up here, lined up different here and different up here, indicating that those different portions of the muscle are involved in slightly different uh, types of movements uh, at the joint. So the trapezius muscle there, uh, we've got, remember, we're going to look at the origin and the insertion. So the origin is where the muscle begins. The insertion is where the muscle ends. When we create movement, as the muscle contracts, generally speaking, the insertion will move towards the origin. OK, so on the uh, the upper portion of the trapezius here, if we isolate that, we can see well, it actually isolates all of the muscle for us nicely. We can see that we've got this connective tissue here. The uh, origin of your trapezius uh, is on your skull. So part of it uh, originates on your skull and it also originates on most of your vertebrae from your, from your seventh cervical vertebrae down to your 12th thoracic vertebrae. So there's insertions, origin, uh, connective tissue connecting the trapezius to all of those vertebrae there. Not cervical vertebrae one to six, as you can see here, it's not connected onto them, but it starts with cervical vertebrae number seven and connects all the way down to thoracic vertebrae number 12. Uh, the trapezius muscle then inserts onto your clavicle and your scapula. So we can see on the anterior surface here, if we uh, zoom in, the trapezius comes down and it inserts onto your clavicle here and it inserts onto your scapula here on the spine of the scapula, this bony prominence on the top uh, or on the scapula there. So the, the trapezius muscle, this large diamond shaped muscle originates on the skull and your cervical and thoracic vertebrae. It inserts onto your clavicle and onto your scapula here. So it crosses over the shoulder, it crosses over the, uh, the joint, this area between your, your, your scapula, your clavicle and your vertebrae. So it's gonna be involved in movement of the shoulder um, when this muscle contracts. So what does it do? It elevates, retracts and depresses your shoulder. Now, it should be no surprise to you at this stage to, to find out that there's gonna be different portions of the trapezius are involved in different uh, different actions. So if we want to elevate our, um, our shoulder blade, our scapula, if we want to raise our scapula up, it's going to be this upper portion of our trapezius is gonna be involved there. If we want to retract our scapula, if we want to pull our shoulder blades back together, it's going to be mainly this middle portion that's involved here. And if we want to depress our scapula to pull our scapula down, it's going to be this lower part of it here. So your trapezius, a large muscle involved in three different types of movement and very, very much involved in stabilization of the shoulder joint as well. So preventing your, uh, your shoulder joint from moving when you don't want it to. Uh, we can have a look there. So let's have a look at some of the different types of movements. Uh, so if we want to retract our shoulder, pull our shoulder back. We can look at this little uh, illustration here. So as the shoulder has been pulled back, we see the shoulder blade has been pulled back. The trapezius, this middle portion of the trapezius lights up, indicating that that's the active muscle as the shoulder blade is being retracted. If we want to elevate the shoulder, we see that that is also involved as we pull up. Um, and if I go back out, I need to select a different muscle if I want to show you uh, the different types of movement that are involved. 
Apologies here, my computer's on a bit of a go slow. Okay, we're back. Thank God it didn't crash on us there. So, uh, the different portions of the uh, of the muscle are involved in different types of movement there. But broadly speaking, the uh, trapezius elevates, retracts, and depresses your shoulder. Exercise examples that you might come across in the gym would be barbell shrugs or any type of shrugging exercise where you want to pull your, your shoulders up towards your ears or a bent over row where you want to stabilize your shoulder joint in order to row uh, and retract your shoulder uh, your shoulder back. They would both target uh, your trapezius uh, to some degree. Okay, moving on. The next muscle we want to look at is your latissimus dorsi. Your latissimus dorsi is also located on the posterior surface of your back here. And here we have it highlighted there. So your lats, as they are commonly named, are this pair of muscles here. They are located um, on the posterior surface of your back, down from the, just about halfway down your back, right down into the lower portion of your back. Now, again, these are um, it's a big muscle. Um, it's the muscle that kind of gives you that V shape if it's well developed. So as you as you uh, taper up from your from, from your waist, if someone is well developed, you can just about see it there. If someone's got well developed lats, they'll flare out. To the side there. Uh, your lats uh, originate and insert. Exit my selection there. So if we look at just one of them on their own and isolate it, we see here that your latissimus dorsi muscle originates on your thoracic and your lumbar vertebrae. So we see here we're at the lower portion of your thoracic vertebrae here and down into your lumbar vertebrae. Uh, and it also originates on your iliac crest here. So this, uh, this portion of your hip bone here, your iliac crest. So the origin, thoracic and lumbar vertebrae and onto your iliac crest. And the muscle uh, uh, makes its way up under your armpit and it inserts, just pull that down a bit, it inserts onto your humerus here. So we've got like a very, very large surface area of muscle here, but it is, uh, all joins together and forms a very small insertion onto your humerus here. So again, it's involved in movement of the upper arm at the shoulder joint there. And it, this muscle is actually involved in quite a lot of different movements. It's involved in adduction of the, um, of the arm. Adduction is when we are bringing something back down towards the midline of the body. So bringing your humerus back towards the midline of the body, that is going to be your lats. It's also involved in extension and internal rotation of the humerus. So if you wanted to um, pull your arm back behind you or if you wanted to turn it inwards, your lats are also involved in that movement there. Exercises in the gym that target your lats are going to be your lat pull down or your pull up. So again, if you think about um, uh, those type of movements, if you're in a pull up movement from here, as you pull down, you're adducting your arms, you're adding them back towards the midline of the body. So your uh, lats are very much involved in that kind of movement or that kind of exercise. Okay, moving on from our lats, the next one we want to look at are our rhomboids. Now, in this view here, we can't see our rhomboids. What we want to do is strip back a layer. They are deep, or they lie underneath your, uh, your trapezius there. So if we strip back the trapezius, we see that we've got uh, a pair of muscles here. Uh, on either side, your rhomboid major and your rhomboid minor. So just to let you see those on their own there. This bigger, the one that's, that's, that's lower down is your rhomboid major. And above that, we have your rhomboid minor. And if we select all of them, what we're looking at there are your rhomboids, okay? So we've got your um, rhomboid major and minor on the left and the right side. Again, named after the shape of the, the, that the muscles make uh, when they are grouped together like that. If we look, we see your uh, rhomboid major and minor, they originate again on your vertebrae 
and they insert here onto your scapula. So if we pick uh, the rhomboid uh, minor, major there and isolate it, we can see that it originates uh, on your um, vertebrae here. So this is your uh, T2 to T5, your th second thoracic vertebrae down to your th uh, fifth thoracic vertebrae. And it inserts onto the medial border of your scapula here. Okay, so the medial border towards the midline of the body, that's this medial edge here. Uh, above that, <coughs> excuse me, we would have your uh, rhomboid minor. And if we look at that in isolation, very, very similar. It originates on your seventh cervical vertebrae and your first thoracic vertebrae. And it also inserts onto your medial um, border of your scapula there. So both of those muscles together, <coughs> They originate on your cervical and your thoracic vertebrae. They insert onto your scapula here and they are involved in retraction. So pulling that shoulder blade back and towards the midline of the body <clears throat> and are also involved in shoulder stabilization. So preventing any unwanted movement of the shoulder during other actions. So keeping the shoulder joint nice and stable. An example of an exercise that might target that um, uh, would be for say maybe a seated row. So if you were to sit uh, a seated row where at, at the end of the range of motion there, you are going to want to retract and pull your shoulder blades back together. So you're targeting your, uh, your rhomboids as part of that movement there. Okay, next we want to look at your teres major. Your teres major is a sneaky little one. Uh, if I put the, the traps back in, your teres major is this muscle here. Okay, so it's uh, it. There is a superficial portion of it that we can see at the surface there, but if we want to get a good look at it, we need to strip back a couple of layers there. Maybe another one. Oh no, that takes it away. So we have your teres major muscle there. If we isolate it, we see here that the teres major muscle now, this originates on your scapula, specifically on the inferior angle of the scapula. That's where the, the scapula creates this angle down at the bottom, the inferior angle of the scapula here. It comes up under your armpit and it inserts onto your humerus here. Uh, so again, this is a fairly important muscle. It's involved in abduction uh, of the uh, of the sorry adduction, not abduction, abduction of the humerus. So pulling the humerus back towards the midline of the body, and it's also involved in medial rotation uh, of the the of the humerus in the shoulder joint so if you wanted to turn your shoulder inwards rotate your humerus inwards medial rotation your teres or sorry your um teres major muscle there is going to be involved in that as that muscle contracts it's going to pull the adductus arm and it's going to because it kind of inserts onto the front surface of it here as it contracts it'll cause a bit of rotation in that joint as well uh, again, this muscle is also involved in stabilization of the shoulder joint and a good example of that would be a dumbbell row would be a, go a good exercise that's going to target your uh, teres major muscle. Uh, can we see? So just have a look at the, the rotation there. Videos are slightly slow, so <clears throat> here we have. Don't freeze up on me. So this, what we see here is we're internally rotating the arm. So we're rotating that arm in, and it's actually the teres major of the muscles that we see here lighting up it's rotating the arm inward like that. And that's as well as the other jobs that it does. So we said it's involved in adduction, pulling the arm back down towards the midline of the body and stabilizing the shoulder joint as well. If we have a teres major, should be no surprise to hear that we have a teres minor as well. 
and that is located uh, slightly um, uh, superior to the teres major. So the teres major is just here and above it in a superior position we have the teres minor. And that muscle uh, again if we isolate it uh, originates on the scapula, inserts onto the humerus. See this time it inserts onto a slightly different position on the humerus there. The teres major crosses up this inside here and inserts onto this portion. The teres may, my, sorry, that was the teres major, comes up here and inserts onto this side. The teres may, minor inserts onto the back part of it here. Um, it's involved in horizontal abduction and shoulder stabilization. So horizontal abduction of the arm. <clears throat> give up bring up that and um, it doesn't give us an example of it there uh, horizontal abduction of the arm is when we have the arm up uh, like this and we are pulling the arm back so from here to here we're involved in horizontal abduction that is your teres minor muscle okay we are getting through them here the next one we want to look at is your uh, your rotator cuff muscles so together we've got four muscles that are that uh, that are surround the shoulder joint uh, and they are known as your rotator cuff muscles uh, each muscle also has a tendon that connects the muscle onto the bone your rotator cuff tendons share the same name as the muscles that they uh, that they originate from so you've got rotator cuff muscles rotator cuff tendons uh, they share the same names there's a little acronym to remember your show your rotator cuff muscles and what we say is that the rotator cuffs sits on the shoulder s i t s so there's four muscles that we've got involved in it the supraspinatus the infraspinatus the teres minor and the subscapularis uh, the teres minor we've already looked at so let's layer back in um, a, our muscles here oh, and we'll get a look at our um, we'll get a look at our rotator cuff muscles so we have our shoulder joint we've added in all of the muscles so we've got our pecs we've got our deltoids we've got our trapezius covering them up covering our shoulder joint there if we strip back a layer here we see uh, some of the muscles that lie deep to it we've mentioned some of them already uh, the teres may sorry the teres minor is part of the sh the rotator cuff muscles there so that's one of them uh, we have also got your infraspinatus muscle on top of that or superior to that we've got your supraspinatus muscle and then we have your subscapularis muscle as well so the subscapularis we just need to come around to the front here and highlight that so if you see there we have got these four muscles that all wrap around the shoulder joint there I'll try and you just isolate those so we look at them there you get a nice view of those so those four muscles there they wrap around the shoulder joint they all insert onto the head of the humerus there and hold that the, the head of the humerus uh, the ball into the socket of the shoulder joint so these are the four rotator cuff muscles and then here we have the tendons. The tendon is the part of the, 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 the connective tissue that joins the muscle to the bone. So your rotator cuff tendons are these tendons here. They share the same name as the muscle that they originate from. So rotator cuffs, they sit on the shoulder joint. They hold the ball of the so shoulder joint tightly into the socket. So we see them nicely there uh, holding that ball into the socket of the shoulder joint there at this level I don't expect you to remember all of the uh, you, you don't need to remember full details of all of the individual muscles just remember that there are four muscles in the joint this remember the little acronym sits supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor subscapularis muscles and the main joint if the main job of those muscles and tendons is to make sure that the humerus 
your upper arm is held securely and centered in place in the shoulder joint there. Uh, okay, the last muscle we want to cover today is the triceps. So we've covered a lot of the muscles of the upper back there. We've covered the uh, the rotator cuff muscles. The last one then, if I exit that selection, we want to look at is the triceps. They are the muscles on the uh, posterior surface of the upper arm. Uh, your triceps are the muscles that extend your elbow joint. So if I isolate them there and it doesn't, we see your triceps uh, known because there are three heads. There are two that we can see quite clearly from the back and we've got a third little head in here. Your triceps, one, two, three heads of your triceps there. Um, if I pick just one of them, Oh no, it still doesn't show me the, the, the bones there. But what we want to see is, I'll hide the others, fade the others, uh, is that your triceps originate on your scapula. So there's one head of your triceps originates on your scapula here, okay? And the other two heads originate on your humerus. So we've got one part of it on the scapula, two parts of it on the humerus there. Um, then all three parts converge together and they cross over the elbow joint and they insert onto the ulna, okay? So again, if I fade the others there, we see that we've got this um, insertion point below the elbow joint um, on the ulna, the big bar, one of, the, one of the, 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 the big bone at your elbow there. So as the muscle, as the tricep muscle contracts, it pulls on the ulna and it extends the elbow joint here. So the tricep is part of a um, antagonistic pair with the biceps. So we've got the biceps on the anterior surface of the upper arm. We've got the triceps on the posterior surface of the upper arm. The bicep serves, serves to flex the elbow to decrease the angle at the joint. While the bicep is flex is contracting and flexing the elbow, the tricep is relaxing and allowing the elbow to flex. If we want the opposite to happen, if we want to extend the elbow, the tricep will contract, the biceps will relax and the elbow will be extended. So we have that antagonistic pair at the elbow joint, the biceps and the triceps. Depending on the movement, one muscle will be the agonist, the one that's creating movement. And while that muscle is creating movement, the opposing one is the antagonist, the one that's facilitating movement. And then when we want to return the, that body part to the original position, um, the roles are reversed. And we've got plenty of other examples. As we mentioned, we said your pecs um, are involved in movement of your humerus. Again, if we just to recap, we isolate that quickly. We see your pecs insert onto your humerus here. So they create movement uh, of, your, of, your, um, of your upper arm. Or your lats, isolate them, also insert onto your upper arm here and create a different type of movement. So your pecs and your lats are another antagonistic pair. So the, your pecs and your lats on the back there work as an antagonistic pair or we haven't covered them yet uh, sorry we haven't covered them yet but uh, we have your m muscles in your lower body we've got your quads the muscles on the surface anterior surface of your humerus and we've got your hamstrings the muscles on the posterior surface they work to extend and to flex the knee joint another antagonistic pair um, so we'll come across more examples of those as we progress through the module. That's everything I wanted to cover for today. Uh, please make sure you check out the Quizlet to help you revise the topics that we've covered today. And I will see you in the next video.